is the problem 1. Medium 1 has electrical permittivity epsilon 1 equals to 1 1.5 epsilon naught farad per meter and occupies the region to the left side of x is equals to 0 plane. And medium 2 has the electrical permittivity epsilon 2 is equals to 2.5 epsilon naught farad per meter and occupies the region to the right of x is equals to 0 plane. If E 1 is in medium 1 that is E 1 is equals to 2 A x minus 3 A y plus A z volt per meter then E 2 in medium 2 E is. Here just observe what is the data given to us that there is a boundary that boundary is clearly x is equals to 0 boundary. So, at x is equals to 0 boundary it is a we are supposed to apply the boundary condition. So, before that for less than uh, 0 we have some electric field that is given to us for greater than 0 we are supposed to obtain the electric field. So, before that what is x is equals to 0 boundary? x is equals to 0 indicates a plane which is y z plane. So, let us take this is the y z plane that what we have that x is equals to 0 corresponds to as a y z plane and less than is negative x axis greater than is called as positive x axis. So, just you have to remember uh, recollect the uh, rectangular coordinate system in that rectangular coordinate system. So, we are supposed to take all these planes right. Now, what I do is I will directly draw that y z plane. So, let us take this is the y z plane that is at this plane x is equals to 0 right. So, below this x is equals to 0 always it is negative x axis that represent this one as a negative x axis and above this one it is a positive x axis right. Now, the different different parameters are given to us yes at less than uh, this 0 x value as 0 epsilon 1 that what we have and at size in this region it is epsilon 2 right. Here E 1 is given to us here we are supposed to identify what is E 2 right. Now, clearly we are supposed to decompose this electric field intensity as the tangential component and normal component because we have the relation between the tangential and normal only we have no relation between x y z right. So, what is the tangential component for the given condition or given scenario what is the normal component for given scenario like just remember are the recollect our planes that is y z plane that what we have for y z plane what is the vector which is normal to it always x right. So, for this x is equals to 0 plane that is nothing but y z plane if you have any component which is in the direction of x which is said to be the normal component the remaining all are tangential components. So, what is the equation of E 1 here equation of E 1 is 2 a x minus 3 a y a plus a z. So, in that one what is the normal component the component which is in the direction of x that may be in positive x direction or negative x direction what that may be the direction if the component is in x direction clearly it is said to be the normal component. So, for this E 1 directly I am writing the normal component with that is nothing but you are 2 a x that the identification is very important here that the tangential component we are ob observing for the boundary right and that is a uh, not tangential normal component. So, E 1 n is equals to 2 a x that is the normal component the remaining all are tangential components. So, E 1 tangential component is directly write down this one as minus 3 a y plus a z did you get it. So, clearly the tangential component is normal to the boundary uh, normal component is normal to the boundary and the remaining all are tangential components. Now, try to get your boundary conditions for electric field the tangential component is always continuous that there will be no change in the tangential component. So, wherever you have the tangential component directly write down in the second medium no need to change it. So, here what I do is I will take this E 2 tangential component same as our E 1 tangential component which is equals to minus 3 a y plus a z no need to change it, but what about the normal component the normal component is discontinuous it is not equals to the uh, previous one. So, for that the normal component of the flux density we are supposed to take the normal component of the flux density is continuous that what we can write is d 1 n is equals to d 2 n d 1 n is equals to d 2 n corresponds to e 1 n multiplied with epsilon 1 is equals to e 2 n multiplied with epsilon 2 from that what we require is e 2 n right. So, e 2 n is equals to directly write down here. So, E 2 n is equals to epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2 multiplied with E 1 
n. So, epsilon 1 by epsilon 2 is nothing but epsilon r 1 by epsilon r 2 or uh, they are given directly we can substitute there. So, clearly from this e 2 n can be obtained with this simple relation what is our epsilon 1? Epsilon 1 is given as 1.5 epsilon naught divided by so uh, epsilon 2 what is epsilon 2? 2.5 epsilon naught. So, it is 2.5 epsilon naught multiplied with e 1 n. So, what is e 1 n? 2 a x simply it is 2 a x. So, it is 15 by 25 multiplied with 2. So, approximately equals to 1.2. So, which is equals to just 1.2 a x. So, very simple one that what we got is uh, the decomposition. So, the electric field was decomposed as normal component and tangential component. The tangential component as it is it was transferred to the second medium or the uh, through the boundary, but the normal component was changed initially it is 2 a x, but now the magnitude was changed to 1.2 a x. Now, the combination of these two is nothing but your e 2. So, just add them if we add then what we get is 1.2 a x minus 3 a y plus a z volt per meter. Simply this is the answer what we require. The electric field component in the second medium is as the combination of E 2 n and E 2 t that is simple answer. Two dielectric media with permittivity is 3 and root 3 are separated by a charge free boundary as shown in figure below. The electric field intensity in medium 1 is E 1 and makes an angle of alpha 1 is equal to 60 degrees with the normal. Then the angle made by E 2 with respect to the normal that is alpha 2 e is here clearly observe what is the data given to us. The electric field is travelling from one medium to another medium that is exactly at the boundary it is taking refraction that what we discussed earlier. Now, these two angles are given to us uh, that is the, let us take this is alpha 1 and this is alpha 2. In our analysis we took this one as theta 1 and this is theta 2 no problem what you, whatever may be the notation. So, here uh, the two angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 are given to us whatever may be the notation uh, take them as it is no problem. Okay. So, this is angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction. So, here a very simple equation that is law of refraction of our electric fields is very much useful. At the boundary what is the law of refraction? We know tan theta 1 divided by tan theta 2 is equals to epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2. Uh, so, blindly remember theta 1 epsilon 1 theta 2 epsilon 2 right. So, here uh, just we need to replace or we need to uh, substitute all these uh, values from our figure. What is theta 1? Angle of incidence. What is angle of incidence? Alpha 1 which is equal to 60 degrees. Substitute here tan 60 degrees divided by what is theta 2? Theta 2 is angle of refraction, refraction angle that is alpha 2. So, clearly it is tan alpha 2 we do not know how much it is we are supposed to calculate it which is equal to what is epsilon 1? Epsilon 1 is equal to 3 divided by epsilon 2, epsilon 2 is root 3. So, tan 60 by uh, tan alpha 2 is equals to 3 by root 3 which is nothing but simply root 3, tan 60 is root 3, root 3, root 3 will be cancelled which corresponds to tan alpha 2 is equals to 1 that implies alpha 2 is equals to 45 degrees. So, this is the answer it is a very simple one. So, if you know the refraction law of refraction for our electric fields then it is very easy to solve the problem. Like this uh, different problems will be given uh, for our boundary conditions purely depend upon the boundary uh, conditions which are satisfied which will be satisfied for electric field and magnetic field that we are supposed to remember what is the relation between tangential and normal components. So, with this one we can conclude our 